Uh, welcome and thank you for attending today's event. We're thrilled with the turnout today. Um, I'm Mark Connor. I'm the Director of Public Works. We'd first like to start out by thanking the Sioux Falls Development Foundation for hosting this groundbreaking. To keep up with the groundbreakings all across the city, they have to buy a lot of shovels. Um, we're going to partake in that uh, later today. Uh, secondly, we'd also like to thank our City Link team and our City Communications team. They make everything possible with the city. Um, they've got 11 departments to support. We just really greatly appreciate them here as well today. i uh, also like to thank the leaders that have agreed to speak. They're uh, next to me here along with representatives from the state congressional offices, the governor's offices, and the state offices, state legislators that are here, Minnehaha County representatives, Sioux Falls City Council current and newly elected members, Community leaders from the region. This is a regional wastewater plant. We've invited community leaders from the region. Members of the engineering and contracting community, City of Sioux Falls, one team members, and the members of the water reclamation team that work every day to optimize this plant, go beyond our permit requirements, and responsibly discharge treated wastewater back to the environment. Now, some logistics. I know it's a little cold, but we do have water. If you want to warm up, we've got some coffee. Um, and it's notable, we don't have any proof of this, but we think we've got the fastest flushing toilets in the administration building. So, uh, Tours, we hope that you'll join us afterwards today. Um, even if you have time to just see part of the plant, uh, there's a lot that happens in this plant 24-7. Um, and I can guarantee you, um, with it being on about 70 acres, if you've got a step count that you're trying to hit today, you'll probably hit it if you go on one of the tours. All right, uh, the project that we're here to break ground on has taken several years of planning, design, funding, um, and most recently bidding. Total project cost is $215 million. This project will rehabilitate this existing regional wastewater plant that was constructed 40 years ago. The city has maximized its capacity through careful planning and execution of several projects over many years. Today we'll start to expand this plant by an additional 50% by increasing the capacity from 21 million gallons per day to 30 million gallons per day. If we're successful today, we'll introduce you to the language of wastewater. Um, you'll hear a number of acronyms likely either from the speakers or on tours, um, but words like MGD, million gallons per day, BOD, TSS, TKN, biosolids cake, Mayor always gets nervous when I say I'm bringing cake to something. Um, 15 KVA, uh, jet trucks, camera trucks, uh, SCADA, and the list goes on. In all seriousness, it's a complex environmental business that requires um, talented people from the start managing the biology through daily uh, laboratory monitoring, uh, monitoring data, engineering, and serving our customers, and so much more. The support of the mayor and city council has been unwavering uh, through this project. Our first speaker, Alex Jensen, has been a champion of looking forward and planning the city. Please help me welcome the vice chair of our city council, Alex Jensen. Well, thanks, Director Cotter. Everyone knows that the city council could not come out here and run this building. So for our employees that work here, Thank you very much for, for coming out here and doing this every single day and for the leadership of Director Cotter. We couldn't do it without him. It, it's interesting, if you look back in history, we bought this land out here, which is over 400 acres, uh, over 50 years ago. Who knew we'd, we'd be at 70 today, right? We're, we're only optimizing 70% of this, so we have room to grow. And Sioux Falls in South Dakota is growing, so it's unique that we're positioned to grow with it. We've got a north wind uh, blowing in today, and if you didn't put it in Google Maps on your way out here, it's kind of hard to find. You don't see this. You don't smell it. Modern technology takes care of the odors that, that come along with this, at least on the outside, maybe on the inside a little different. But as we continue to grow as a city, and Director Cotter and the employees here continue to lead us in, in wastewater uh, treatment and reclamation, this is a great great place to be as a city. Uh, for my young family, we know that we can grow up here, we can watch this city grow, and, and as my city council colleagues that are here and, and not, uh, we want this to continue to be a place where we can grow, and when we flush the toilet, 
the stuff stays down. That's the blocking and tackling of city government. So I appreciate what you guys are doing out here, and I look forward to the next 50 years. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Uh, these projects don't happen without the dedication of many. We'd like to just quickly introduce you to our project team, starting with Aaron Bofenkamp, Shannon Verhey, Mark Perry, Jesse Nyons, Alan Brummel, our entire plant team. Uh, Jim Wiederich is our outside counsel. Mark Alpert is our owner's rep. Prolo Engineers is our designer. They've been focused on water and wastewater design for 85 years. McCarthy Construction has teamed up with Henry Carlson locally. McCarthy is our construction manager at risk. They built some of the most complex wastewater projects in the United States, and they've been in business since 1864. Interstates is a local electrical firm, industrial electrical firm, that we brought on early to help with the design assist. They will completely rebuild the electrical system of this plant with two redundant feeder loops and convert the voltage from 5 kVA to 15 kVA. This project team has, asked, has had to ask a lot of good questions so they can really inform the design and position this plant for the next 20, 50, and 100 years. When we think about growth and infrastructure, we, also, we often think about those elements that are right in front of us, like roads and bridges. Wastewater is a critical utility, largely out of sight and out of mind but it's the first utility that goes in to open up new development areas. An expert in growth and a person that knows some of the language of wastewater, um, please help me welcome President and CEO of the Sioux Falls Development Foundation, Mr. Bob Munt. Well, thank you, Director Cotter. It's a pleasure for uh, me to be here today. And uh, Mark's right, over the last uh, probably year and a half, I've learned more about biosolids than what I really wanted to know. Uh, and Mark, I want to thank you for having piles of that behind us that we can scoop later. Um, you know, people wonder why, uh, you know, the Development Foundation is interested in this kind of uh, growth and development. And, and as Mark said, uh, this doesn't happen um, without demand. And as Sioux Falls grows, we create the demand for this kind of a facility here. And without this kind of facility, that growth doesn't happen. Uh, so many of us uh, take for granted some of that growth that happens around the community and around this this great state of ours. And it's it, if it weren't for the people that knew how to do this and to, knew, to do the things that we need to do in order to make that, that visible growth possible, uh, we wouldn't be able to be here today. Um, I want to thank uh, Director Cotter and the city staff, uh, the mayor, for having the foresight and the vision to take a look at what we will look like 10, 15, 25, 50 years from now, and having the ability to plan for that. That's something that you know we look for as a development foundation and looking at growing this community. Uh, what are those capacities? What are the types of things that we need to do now in order to create that growth in the future? And so uh, I want to thank uh, everyone involved in this process. Uh, it is critical to our growth both now and in the future, uh, and I look forward to uh, more of that growth. So thank you, uh, Director Cotter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the work that you do and thank you to all the city staff and the folks that are responsible for making this happen um, thank you well thank you bob and we appreciate your continued leadership in the growth of this city wastewater plants are very capital intensive we talked about earlier it's 215 million dollars um, this is only possible with our relationship with the state of south dakota so we can secure low interest loans and a significant grant to make sure that today is possible. Please help me welcome Secretary Hunter Roberts. He leads the State Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Well, good morning and it's great to be here today. The Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources envisions a South Dakota with a prosperous economy, diverse agriculture opportunities, clean air, clean water and healthy families. Uh, and having modern, efficient, reliable wastewater treatment facilities is an important element to achieving that goal. The department's environmental funding program has a long history of supporting water and wastewater infrastructure across the state and also in particular with the city of Sioux Falls. To date, the department has dedicated more than $180 million in clean water state revolving fund loans to this project and is recommending an additional $41.9 million in American Rescue Plan Act grants. 
The ARPA grants are part of $600 million investment in water and wastewater infrastructure across the state that will have positive impacts for, for our public health, our economy, and our natural resources for decades to come. I'd like to thank Governor Nome for her vision for the ARPA funds and for recognizing the long-term value of investing in projects like this. Thank you to our legislators for supporting this historic funding opportunity. And thank you to the city of Sioux Falls and its dedicated employees for working to make this project a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Robertson. Please thank your team of financial assistants. They are second to none. All right, our last speaker is a visionary leader with a constant eye on strategic and smart growth. He needs no introduction. Please help me welcome Mayor Paul Tenhaken. All right, thanks, Mark and speakers. Uh, I'm going to keep it short because we need to break ground quick or the costs are going to keep going up on this project. So um, I want to thank you all for coming out today. This is a lot more people than I thought would come out, which tells me that uh, a lot more people recognize how important this investment is uh, than maybe I anticipated, which is great to see. Um, we have a, a motto in the city that we uh, we adopted three or four years ago, and we we uh, we call it taking care of today for a better tomorrow. What we mean by that is there's a lot of things that we're doing now that a lot of us who are working here will never be able to see the benefits of or see the fruits of that labor during our time in whether it's an office or even as an employee. Uh, this is a great example of that. Uh, and it doesn't happen just by accident. Um, Secretary Roberts just mentioned uh, people like the legislature, you know, uh, Senators Colbeck and Nezabai, I'm sure there's maybe some other legislators here. I talked to uh, Doug Barthel as well. Uh, they appropriated funding for this. Uh, without that, this project does not happen. Um, GOD Commissioner Westra, I don't know if Steve is here, but a lot of times when we are talking with businesses about coming to Sioux Falls, their first two questions are, what's your workforce like? Do you have employees? And then they want to talk about water and wastewater. And if we do not expand the, the capacity of our water and wastewater, we simply can't uh, help those businesses grow, uh, help new businesses come here. Uh, so that's a very important part of economic development uh, as well. Um, I also want to thank our city council. They've been supporters of this. We're able to fund this project through our enterprise fund with very, very minimal rate increases. We still have some of the most affordable water and wastewater rates in the entire state, and that's thanks to smart planning long before me, uh, even long before Mark was in his chair. Uh, the city has just grown in a very smart fashion. And uh, Councilor Jensen alluded to this. This city has been planned very smart too. The fact that this wastewater facility is where it is, and a lot of people don't even know it's here, I think is a sign of just very smart planning. And the fact that we have the ability to grow and expand out here, uh, I, I need to tip my hat to the leaders of the last several decades. When I came in office, there were two big projects that I knew were gonna be important that two leaders sat down with me on right away. One was Mark. And he said, hey, I want, you're going to need to get spun up on our wastewater treatment expansion that's going to have to happen. The second was Chief Burns talking about a tired public safety training center that we were going to have to invest in at some point. And you probably drove past that. You see the walls going up. Uh, I believe that's on our PSAP. Uh, when you leave here, if you don't, don't take the gravel way. Take the other way and you're going to go past our public safety training facility. Uh, and so I want to thank those guys for their visionary uh, uh, ideas and uh, strategies that uh, are going to keep Sioux Falls growing. Uh, you know, we've added, we added 19,000 people during my first term as mayor. So uh, we've added, you know, more than, a, more than a Mitchell, if you think of it that way. Uh, in the next eight years, we're going to add uh, another 40,000 people to Sioux Falls if our pace continues. That's, that's like adding three peers to Sioux Falls. So Sioux Falls is growing at an incredible uh, pace right now. And in order to keep up with that, we have to invest in things like this. So I'm very proud to be working with our incredible engineering team. Uh, a lot of the guys that you see in the blaze yellow, uh, give them a pat on the back. Those are our employees that work out here. And this is, this is thankless work. You know, when you're a cop or a parks worker or, you know, people give you a high five, you get a see at the convenience store. Uh, these guys come out here. They're hidden out here doing uh, the Lord's work out here. Uh, and so uh, if you see our city staff, just please thank them because they're really incredible. 
Uh, in closing, I just want to say um, we still do have uh, naming rights available for this expansion. <laughs> you know, Huther, Huther got to build a premier center. Good for him. I get to build a wastewater plant, right? So uh, if anybody wants naming rights, come talk to me after this. But, but in closing, thanks for being out there, uh, being out here. Uh, thanks for coming out today. Thanks to our leadership. Uh, let's turn some dirt and get this thing going. Thank you. All right, to the project team, since we haven't uh, worked through the signage, I think we may have an idea for uh, the naming rights. All right, uh, in conclusion, I'd like to elevate our plant team. They keep this place running 24-7. Um, as we uh, go through their respective teams, um, if you guys would just raise your hand so these guys here uh, that attended the groundbreaking event can actually make a connection with you. So let's start with the operations team led by Mark Herholzer. Will you guys raise your hands? Uh, the maintenance and controls team led by Jeff Workenthien. Nice. Biosolids team led by Phil Greenwood. The sewer collection teams led by Shad Hochstein and Tony Schneider. Regulatory and compliance and laboratory team led by Jesse Nyans. Plan Administration and Superintendent led by Mark Perry. And our Utility Administrator, Ryan Johnson. Thank you again for coming today. Let's break some ground.